Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another YouTube video. Uh, today we have the number six Rungi build, the RS. Uh, as I've mentioned in other videos, this is the first of the RS design. It is the only RS built on the 83 and a half inch wheelbase. So it's super fun to drive. And uh, the car's back here in my shop for its first service after uh, being completed back in 2017. So I thought it'd be cool to make a video and go over some neat details on this build. So since this build, I've purchased quite a few tools that make the job a lot easier. That's the first thing about this car that comes back to memory having it here in the shop is that I built this car with basic hand tools, uh, the English wheel. Um, but for the most part, there was not a lot of automated type of equipment involved. So it's kind of fun to see how things have evolved since this car was built. Um, the car was designed to capture the era of the late 1950s, a uh, little bit of the Porsche RSK, a little bit of 550 Spider, but still it's its own unique design. Um, you'll see in the rear and the tail, there's a little bit of Maserati going on, uh, the 300S kind of shapes. Uh, but the car is powered by a Porsche 912 four cylinder. Um, it puts out about 100 horsepower, but it's just so perfectly balanced with you know, what you think only 100 horsepower, but the car weighs about 1200 pounds. So the power to weight ratio is just beautiful. The engine is mated to a four speed long box, like what would be in a Volkswagen type one swing axle, but we've changed out the gearing and the ring and pinion to have uh, much longer legs at the top end. Um, it's got period Porsche B drums that we've vented all the way around so they stay cooler than the stock drums would. Uh, front beam, typical type one beam, but it's adjustable for height. The rear is also height adjustable uh, via two different adjustment locations, one in the cockpit and one on each trailing arm. Um, and then it's a tube frame steel chassis reminiscent of the 550 and makes for just as you can see in the video super super fun driving experience the body that you're looking at is all hand formed aluminum it's 3003 h14 uh, 50 thousandths on this build so a little bit thinner than my newer builds let's take a look at some of the neat details of this build in the front, we've got the fuel tank with the 100 millimeter uh, racing type of fuel filler. We've got a little bit of storage space down in the front here. Uh, we've got access panel for the um, master cylinder for the brake and clutch and other uh, mechanical service that would need to take place underneath this area. So the cockpit features uh, Porsche 912 gauges. We've got aviation style switch gear. Uh, signals have their own indicator lights so you know when those are off and on. Your headlights are here. Uh, electric fuel pump. And then this is a distribution switch to divert fuel from the main tank to what we call a qualifier tank that's hidden under here and has its own separate filler point on the side of the car in this area. Uh, it's got a removable steering wheel, so it makes it easy getting in and out. The doors have a swing forward type of movement. You can see the aviation style strut to hold the door open. Uh, tag your rally clocks, and then this period ashtray. Overall, very simple, utilitarian, and to the point design for the interior. On each side of the car, you'll see these louvered doors and they are functional. The way that they work is that the louvers here are pulling air out of this cavity and this intake is supplying air into the cavity. So it's forced in and then the louvers pull it off. By unlocking the Zeus fastener, you can see in here, we've got the oil catch can and then we've got an oil cooler right in front of that duct. So that's getting uh, good cooling to the oil system. The oil system is plumbed through the firewall over to the other side where we have a reusable Oberg oil filter. It's 
So here we've installed the Oberg filter. If you've never seen one of these, they're pretty cool. It has a disc inside that you can inspect what's going through your oil system, wash it out and put the disc back in. Underneath the Oberg filter, we fabricated a little catch tray for any of the drips and oil that comes out of the filter when you're inspecting it. And it's drained out through the bottom of the car where you can put your oil pan to catch anything that comes out of it. So the rear deck lid houses both the engine bay and a small storage area. And this storage area has panels that are all removable so that you can service pretty much everything in here. All the panels come out, everything is easily accessible, and it makes servicing the car super, super easy.